And I just want to, let me, let me see that, man. I just want to sh show you guys why I got kicked out. This is what the NBA has turned into. Instead of coaches taking responsibility for their ineptitude, they're going to press conferences, pulling out laptops, and acting like they're going to fight refs as they get kicked out of games. Mike Brown, this is why you should have been kicked out. Right here we have the Pacers versus the Kings. The Pacers are running a false action. What a false action means is we're going to act like we're running this play on the downside of the floor. We really want to get the ball to the upside of the floor. They're acting like they're running this flare screen for Ben Matherin, but look at his body language. He's completely leaned back. He ain't looking to shoot that. He's swinging at the T.J. McConnell to get this pick and roll with him and Miles Turner. Now, T.J. McConnell is shooting 6% from three at this point in the season. 6%. Anybody that's shooting 6%, you want them to shoot the three. But what do the Kings do? They go over the screen and they switch with Demontis Sabonis and bring him downhill. Keegan Murray is not at the nail. Miles Turner has a direct driving lane right to the basket. Kevin Herter is supposed to tag him, but right when he does that, Mike Brown, you yell something at Kevin Herter to remind him about the back end hammer screen for Buddy Hill. What does this allow Miles Turner to do? Get a wide open dunk. Mike Brown, you ain't getting kicked out of games because of bad refs. You getting kicked out of games because you a bad coach. We're going to break it down a little further here. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pod. My name is Dorian from Group82Basketball.com, and right here we have the Luke Walton-led Sacramento Kings showing the Mike Brown-led Sacramento Kings how to guard a non-shooter. Rajon Rondo is a notorious non-shooter. Yogi Ferrell guarding the ball knows this. So on this LeBron James ball screen, he's going to go under, meet him at the driving point, and draw an offensive foul because you know non-shooters are just trying to get downhill. Right here we have the Mike Brown-led Sacramento Kings guarding a 6 percent three-point shooter 45 feet away from the basket literally makes no sense at all tj mcconnell hits buddy hill on this pistol action i would love for malik monk to be outside of buddy hill to turn him inside to the help because you know tj mcconnell is coming down heel on all dribble handoffs they're automatically switching look at keon ellis and malik monk they're so close that they run into each other that keon ellis's hand is on his stomach so tj mcconnell is able to instantly turn down heel once he turns downhill, look at all these arrows. These are the proper rotations of what everyone's supposed to do to make the Pacers take a contested jump shot. What do the Kings do? Everyone just stands around and looks, and you end up getting Obi Toppin, a 42% corner three-point shooter, a wide open corner look. Here we are in transition. For all you short guards, I want you to pay attention to what TJ McConnell does here. It's a beautiful play for him to get a beautiful pass to a running big to the rim. The Pacers are gonna take this Demontis Sabonis three all day. It's like an automatic turnover for them. Once again, TJ McConnell, 6% three-point shooter. Yet we have three guys crowding him at half court. Everyone should be dropping back and protecting the rim at this point. But because they're crowded all the way up, TJ McConnell does something exceptionally smart. He shows the ball. He shows a fake pass he's going to throw over the top, which allows just a little bit of hesitation, makes Harrison Barnes stand up, and he throws a beautiful bounce pass. Mike Brown's defensive philosophy was the reason for that last basket, and right here it just shows that his team doesn't even know what they're supposed to be doing on side ball screens. Right here we have the X closeout. Kevin Herter, the red arrow, is going to close out to the shooter. De'Aaron Fox, the green arrow, is going to close out to 6% three-point shooter TJ McConnell. As De'Aaron Fox closes out here, look at Kevin Herter. He gets skinny behind Jalen Smith's back. So that tells me that they were supposed to probably go under. But the way that De'Aaron Fox guarded this, he guarded this as if they were icing the ball screen and sitting TJ McConnell down. If they were, Kevin Herter would have been over there for support. This is a massive miscommunication, which leads to an easy stop and pop for TJ. Here we are with another side ball screen situation. And as you can see with Mike Brown's defensive philosophy, TJ McConnell's just able to just walk right down the lane. On, look at this when he comes across half court. This is a 6% three-point shooter. There's four Kings players, three Pacers players. Sabonis got his hands out like, what are we even doing? Why are we doing this? There's an immediate switch on all side ball screens for them. So now you got Kevin Herter guarding TJ McConnell above the three-point line. He's going to get broke off. DeMontis Sabonis should be in that gap coverage, dropping down to that elbow, but he doesn't. 
He's late. And because he's late, I want all you small players to pay attention to what TJ McConnell did. He used his size to his advantage. He ducked under their arms and he finishes right at the rim. Mike Brown, you should watch some tape of Lloyd Pierce's Atlanta Hawks team. They did a phenomenal job of guarding side pick and rolls and non-shooters. Once again, we got Rajon Rondo, a non-shooter on a side pick and roll. Alex Lynn, who's guarding Anthony Davis, the ball screener, he's gonna be in a deep drop coverage. Why? Because Rondo can't shoot. This allows DeAndre Bembry to get around that screen and look at right Rajon Rondo's red circle and Bembry's green circle. It looks like a Venn diagram because Bembry's right on his hip and he forces Rondo into a horrible shot. That right there is how a well-coached defensive team guards a non-shooter. This right here is how a horribly coached defensive team guards a non-shooter. Once again, 6%. De'Aaron Fox picking him up at half court. Now we have an automatic switch on side ball screens Keegan Murray is entirely too high. Drop back. He's 6%. Look at the rotations. This is where everybody is supposed to be that will lead to this wing three that Kevin Herter will be able to contest. But we won't even get a chance to get to that because he gets a wide open layup. There's no reason to switch on side ball screens on a non-shooter. All you got to do is go under like Yogi Ferrell did right here with Rajon Rondo. Watch this on the dribble handoff. First under, Yogi Ferrell's trying to sell the file. Hey ref, you gonna call this? You see he pushed me. Rondo makes the read. He's gonna go back into the left side as Anthony Davis sets another screen and Rajon Rondo gets driven right into the teeth of the defense because Yogi Ferrell went under and all five Sacramento Kings defenders are there waiting for him. Instant turnover. I promise y'all this is not a replay. This is the same game. Even the announcers can't believe it. That is McConnell again, again. getting to the rim. Getting to the rim on another side ball screen. What do the Kings do on side ball screens? They switch. Why? Because they're stupid. Look at the help defense this time. Everybody's completely matched up. All Troy Lyle's got to do is be in a deep drop. He's not the deep drop. He's not fast enough. TJ McConnell goes outside, has a wide open driving lane. OB Toppin, yeah, he grabs the air in Fox's arm, holds him up a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Instant layup. That is McConnell again, again. getting to the rim. This play right here isn't so much Mike Brown's defensive philosophy. It's more De'Aaron Fox falling asleep on a late read. Late reads are when you're gonna be late in an offensive possession. So for me, I say eight seconds or lower on the shot clock, and you make some sort of read that leads to a play. De'Aaron Fox is in a great defensive position right now. The ball's gonna be on a dribble handoff on the opposite side. He sees TJ McConnell and he sees the ball. Ben Shepard comes downhill. He's contained by those three defenders. De'Aaron Fox does what any smart defender would do in this situation, looks over his left shoulder to see if TJ McConnell has moved. He is not. De'Aaron Fox sinks a little bit more once his ball is picked up and he sees that TJ McConnell has moved this time. Is Jalen Smith setting a screen on me? No, I need to get over to that nail. De'Aaron Fox takes a terrible angle and watch what TJ McConnell does here. This is called a stampede catch. He catches the ball running downhill, pushing off his left foot. De'Aaron Fox's right leg is straight up and down. TJ McConnell gets a step ahead of him, wide open three. Here we have another late read situation, a great late read by TJ McConnell with De'Aaron Fox gets caught sleeping. And this shows me that the Sacramento Kings defensive philosophy across the board doesn't get emphasized because they're all falling asleep. Why in the hell are you guarding TJ McConnell 32 feet away from the basket, De'Aaron Fox? This dude shoots 6% from three. Drop down into help coverage. You see Ben Matherin's coming downhill. De'Aaron Fox, you see your four Sacramento Kings teammates are at the mid post or higher. That means no one's behind you. You need to slide down to that box to have a balanced defensive coverage. But what do you do? You're just staring at the ball. Ball gets in the middle of the paint. It's clearly contained. You're staring at the ball again. Where's your man, De'Aaron? He slid right behind you for an easy layup. And this is something that's a habit with you. We don't see it one time. We don't see it two times. We see it all the times. Why are y'all always falling asleep? 
Here we are, Jalen Smith is contained in the middle of the paint. He has picked the ball up. De'Aaron, you are staring at him. At this point, you need to be locating 6% three-point shooter TJ McConnell to see where he is. You know he's gonna move without the ball. He moves right past you. Look at your teammate Malik Monk. He's doing the exact same thing you did, staring at no man's land, and Buddy Hill goes right past him. How are y'all this absent mind on defense? Do y'all smoke before the game or something? 6%. 6%. Guarding him all the way at half court. 6%. Again, take off the bounce. What are you doing? Back up. Why are you crowding this man who's clearly quicker than you and has no sort of outside weapon whatsoever? At this point when you're matched up with him, you should be almost to the nail. And what we have here, we see a ball screen coming. Malik Monk is yelling out the ball screen coverage. And I love what TJ McConnell does right here. He makes his move as soon as the ball screen coverage is shouted out. Look, he's going to reset. Ball screen coverage comes. And I've got it. Y'all can't stop me. Here we have an example of good middle ball screen coverage by the Phoenix Suns when they were coached by Monty Williams, one of the worst NBA coaches of all time. But at least he knows how to get a non-shooter to keep him from going downhill. We have Ricky Rubio guarding Rajon Rondo. LeBron James going to set his step-up screen. Mikael Bridges guarding LeBron. He's going to get skinny. Look at Rubio and how he gets under this screen and meets Rajon Rondo. Mikael Bridges comes out and stunts. A great two-way stunt to make Rajon Rondo hesitate to think, is LeBron open? Can I get him on that mismatch versus Ricky Rubio? No, you got to shoot that brick. Here we are back to Mike Brown, having De'Aaron Fox guard TJ McConnell all the way up to the logo, 40 feet away from the basket. Buddy, if you don't drop down to the nail, man, and make him hit some threes, Mike Brown, no adjustments. This guy's hands in his pockets like Darvin Am. Here we are. We got a ball screen. TJ McConnell does an exceptional job of knowing that they're going to switch this ball screen, and he splits it by getting really low. All small players, look how low he gets. He gets in the middle of the paint, rises up and shows the ball to act like he's going to lay it up, pushes off his left foot to bring that inertia through his right arm, throws a great pass on time, on target, Ben Matherin, bang. Your team's getting cooked, Mike. You gonna make an adjustment? Yep, we are gonna make an adjustment. We're gonna trap. We're gonna trap the 6% three-point shooter beyond the three-point line. We're gonna make him do what he wants to do, which is pass to open guys. Not only are we gonna trap him, we're gonna leave the guy so open because we're not bringing the weak side guy to the nail to make him cover this wide open shooter. This dude, Jairus Walker, is wide open. He can drive down the middle of the paint and dunk. He can drive down the middle of the paint and hit Ben Shepard. He can drive down the middle of the paint, hit Jalen Smith that's in the dunker spot. What does he do? One dribble pull up, splash. Pacers are getting so confident here. TJ McConnell ain't even got a weight on the screen. Miles Turner ain't even got a chance to let TJ McConnell see what he's seeing. They instantly do that. Watch how quick this happens. OB Toppin is about to set the screen. TJ McConnell, he sees the ball screen coming. He hears Harrison Barnes yell the ball screen coverage. He rejects the screen like he's been doing all day. Miles Turner lets TJ McConnell know with his left hand, hey, I'm about to set a flare screen for Obi. Before he can even get his hand up, the ball is already out of TJ's hand and Obi gets a wide open three. Mike Brown, what are you doing? What's it gonna take, Mike? How many times are you gonna see TJ McConnell do this before he make an adjustment that's really gonna work? What y'all defensive staff doing over there? Look at his shot chart. Look like y'all was playing Giannis. Not a six foot point guard who shoots 6% from three. Y'all deserve to lose this game. And TJ McConnell, you deserve that 20 and 10 you dropped on their head. I'm out the pond. Y'all stay true. It's the Sunday, gotta call. My uncle's caught and hit a wall.